we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Welcome to episode 22 of Urgency of Change. This week's episode is the second interview of Krishnamurti by Keith Berwick, which was originally recorded for American television. Next week's episode is a conversation with Pupul Jayaka. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust, based at Brockwood Park in the UK. For more information about activities and programmes at Brockwood, such as the Krishnamurti Retreat Centre, Brockwood Park School, and more about the Foundation, please visit our website at kfoundation.org. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Keith Berwick is a four-time Emmy Award-winning television broadcaster and senior fellow of the Aspen Institute. His career also includes historian, educator, newspaper publisher and editor. This second interview was recorded in Los Angeles in 1983, two years after the first. Themes include What is a human being? What is an individual? Clarity can only come into being when there is no confusion. One must have physical security, but it is being denied because we think in terms of tribalism. Disorder creates authority. Ambition, jealousy, desire and pleasure are not love. What is intelligence? What is thinking? Conscious meditation is determination, not meditation. To meditate, you must understand relationship. What is the root of desire? Is there another instrument than thought? If thought has its right place, then you can look. So the whole question is, what is the psyche? Psyche. Which is the self. What? What is a human being? What is an individual? Is he not the result of all the pressures of environment, tradition, his education, his beliefs, the whole psychological movement which has, he has both inherited, cultivated, educated, that is the real self the psyche, or you, if you like to use, the, that is his consciousness. Ah, his consciousness. Yes. And yet, what you're describing sounds extraordinarily complex. And we hear the admonition to know thyself. Not easy. No, I think it is fairly easy. After all, In the mirror of relationship, whether it's intimate, otherwise, in that mirror you can see yourself very clearly. Your reactions, your prejudices, your all your absurd memories, and the cultivated memories, and kept all that, the images, and you can see that very clearly, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Should we be? I think one should, but very few people are, because it requires a great deal of attention, Mm -hmm. an awareness not only of your environment, Mm -hmm. environment being nature, the whole ecological world, but also one must be aware of one's reactions. And those change from moment to moment. Is that possible to watch all that? 
which is possible if you really have got the intent. If you are really interested, because this has been know thyself from Socrates, Greeks, but much before them, the Hindus and the Chinese, 5,000 years ago, they talked about this. Very, very few people have gone through it. They rely on psychologists, mm -hmm. on professors, on specialists, and they tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. And they follow. But they never put aside all authority and look. But we're taught, we're taught from from the first lessons upward to respect authority, I to know, listen. I know. To so in Christianity, faith and belief and dogma are important. Mm -hmm. That is, in the Middle Ages, they burnt you if you didn't believe what they told you. Yes. But in the Asiatic world, especially in the Hinduism and Buddhism, doubt, skepticism, questioning, is all important. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you're just like a sheep being led. Mm -hmm. So, it has been one of the things that is missing in the Western world, in the religious area. In the scientific area, the question. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole scientific method, course, to set question, up a model to test yes, and question. Test hypothesis, yes. mm -hmm. test that hypothesis, that theory, yes. and doubt it, yes. prove it, change it, yes. but in the religious world, the Christian, they never questioned that. I was in Italy, and I speak Italian. Mm -hmm. When the Pope said, <laughs> if I may quote it, that we must have more faith, mm -hmm. much more faith, and they all, you said, they all accepted it. Mm -hmm. In India, the, if you are seriously, religiously inclined, you begin to question everything. Mm -hmm. So that nothing would be a matter of belief. No, that just did. But yeah. even in India, that is, in the ancient days, they questioned the very belief itself. I mean the grounds for any belief? Yeah. Uh -huh. You start afresh. And do you start afresh over and over and no, over? No, once you clear the ground, Clear the decks, as it were. Uh -huh. Then you can start from there. And how does one clear the decks, as you put it? When you ask that question, how, you are asking for a system, for a method. We've had methods. We've had systems galore. Mm -hmm. The the. All the gurus that come into this country, to the gullible Americans. Many from India. Many right. from India. And they're coining money. Mm -hmm. You've seen all that thing, yes, what's going course. on in this country. And to start afresh, one must be aware of one's conditioning. Mm -hmm. Ah, so that that conditioning, which is a kind of prison, in which we are unfree. On the whole brain structure. Uh -huh. And you have somehow to uh, that's free what I'm yourself. Saying, uh -huh. After all, <coughs> the whole basis of our culture, whether it's East or West, for me there is no East and West, there is only thinking. Uh -huh. Thinking or experiencing <laughs> irrespective of thought. No. No, just a minute, sir. All our activities are based on thinking. Mm -hmm. The whole structure of this studio is based on thinking. Mm -hmm. And all the religions, especially Christianity and so on, are based on thinking. Mm -hmm. Though they may say it's divine revelation, straight from the <laughs> God's mouth, it is still the expression of thought. Reduced to words. Through words, through images, through mm -hmm. pictures. Yes. So, we are, if we want to go into it rather deeply, we are questioning the very structure of thought. Mm -hmm. Because thought has created most extraordinary things in the world mm -hmm. communication, surgery, mm 
medicine. And also it created all the materials of war. Yes. It has been the re wars have been the result of thought, of nationalities. Thought has a great deal to answer for. So, mm -hmm. thought has created the problems, mm -hmm. and then thought tries to solve it, which it can never do. That's what, I don't know if I'm not noticed. Our brains are trained to solve problems mm -hmm. from childhood. Go to school, the whole series of problems are put before you. Mathematical, you know, the whole We're business. taught to be problem solving oh. beings. Yes. Yeah. So our brain is trained, conditioned to solve problems. Mm -hmm. So we make the whole of life into a problem. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. We never look at it not as a problem, but something that you have to understand. The whole of it, not just one part of it. And you can come to understand, not through some system, that a pathless land, as yeah. you say, not through some system... Not through any belief, dogma, rituals. No, no, no religion, no books, no words that can and be no, spoken, incantations. Not committed to any dogma, to any idea, left or right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but by getting in touch with the innermost self. Which is what? The innermost self is essentially, if I may use that word, selfish, self-centered. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole, I mean, you know what's happening here, self-centered interest. Even to the extent that you mentioned that in a relationship with another person, here, as I talk to you, I project out to you and see... Yes you as a mirror for my self-image. Yes, but you can distort that image. Yes. You can say, I don't like it or like it. Mm -hmm. And so you begin to choose. Mm -hmm. And we consider choice brings freedom. On the contrary, choice is indication of lack of freedom. How so? Because if you're clear, you don't choose. It is so. Oh, if, if you are clear, yeah. if you have real clarity, there's, there's no, no choice. choice. Uh-huh. Uh now, clarity can only come into being when there's no confusion. Right. But we're all confused pol politically. In every direction, we are confused. From the greatest politician to the most poor, Clark or pro servant or In, including yourself. What? You too, when you say we are confused, even I know, even you. I'm not confused. No. All right. Because I, I don't belong, if I may talk personally, mm -hmm. to any cult, to any group, to any mm -hmm. nation. And to me, the idea of being a Hindu, American, Russian that is the, one of the major causes of war, the, this tribal division. Mm -hmm. And if man, if you want peace, all that must end. Now think in terms of tribalism. Mm -hmm. No matter how sophisticated these may be, whether it's nations or... I think mean, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. There is uh, the Israelis and the Arabs and the Beirut, you know, all that thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. So. Truth has to do with universals that cut through all yes, of these sir, that divisions. Thought. To find that, or to come upon it, or for it to exist, you must be totally free. Mm -hmm. Free from your conditioning, from your fears, from your anxieties, from your uh, quarrels, you know, all the... Religious beliefs, that. prejudices, but. Mm -hmm. To be free implies no fear. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But most human beings are frightened. Yes. Because they want security. The, search, the search for security, security breeds fear. Breeds fear, yes. I can see They that. want physical security 
and psychological security. One must have physical security, right? Otherwise, you, I wouldn't be here, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> but that psych- physical security is being denied for all humanity because we are thinking in terms of tribalism. Uh-huh. Me, my country, my God, my little backyard, mm-hmm. as opposed to your back little backyard, and we are at each other's throat. So the very search for security is denied security through these okay. divisions. I see that. I see that. So, I mean, it's so obvious. Eh? It is a law. Where there is division, there must be conflict. By definition. By, By definition. definition. It is. All right. What I want to do is to pause for some commercial words and come back and talk about a particular conflict that you experienced and how you resolved it. Yeah. Mr. Krishnamurti, in 1929 you broke with theosophy, with the order that Annie Besant had set up. That's the conflict that I speak of. At least I think it was a conflict. conflict. Aha! So I've I've misunderstood. There was no choice. But why? Why? First of all, sir, if one really understands that truth is a pathless land, that no system, no guru, no authority can lead you to it, Mm -hmm. and there is an organization around you with thousands of members, property, money, you have no idea what it's like, devotion, Mm -hmm. candles. And I said, that's totally wrong, the whole thing. So, I... Your, your given name is Krishnamurti. What, what does the name mean? Uh, Murti means four. Mm-hmm. Krishna was a god, mm-hmm. Hindu god, you know, all of these yes. images. Yes. Yes. That's all. In, uh, every in, in eight, the form every of... eight child is called Krishnamurti. I mean. But in your case, in your case, being in the form or likeness of God was a call to a certain kind of destiny. Mm, sir, Dr. Besant and her group chose me. They, she, Dr. Besant adopted me. Mm-hmm. My brother and myself took us to England, mm-hmm. put through you know, the whole yes. business of it. You met the Luchans there and yes, all of yes, that. Yes. Yes. We lived with so-called British aristocracy. Yes. And <coughs> and there were <coughs> in Holland we had five thousand acres and a castle. Enormous affair. About six thousand people used to turn up from all over the world mm-hmm. to hear what act to say. Yes. I saw how absurd all this was. Another Sectarian group, there are enough sectarian groups, although any... You being revered as oh, a great teacher... A teacher absolutely, prostration, <laughs> anything you want. And I said, it's all wrong. I said, well, abolish the whole thing. There were many politicians, prominent politicians in England who said, you can't do this. Mm-hmm. You must hold all this. It's meant to help you, serve people. I said, broke through all that. And you see, it was not, it has never been a conflict in my life. Nothing. Because I object to conflict. But for a time, you you did serve in that capacity. So no, at some I was, point... You I was too young. I just repeated what they said. Uh-huh. I was really rather immature and rather vague and rather <laughs> moronic. <laughs> but later on, it, you know, one matures slowly. I happen to mature very slowly. Did this come as a as a sudden revelation, or, or a gradual unfolding? No, or? no. From the very beginning, I said certain things, like authority, mm-hmm. like fear, mm-hmm. don't follow anybody, mm-hmm. don't worship persons including myself. Mm-hmm. That, that all is sentimental, romantic. It has nothing to do with this search of truth. Mm-hmm. Or 
nothing to do with understanding yourself. You can understand yourself by watching yourself, not by following some philosophy or some guru, some system. And so you renounced all of that? I wouldn't use even renounced. That sounds rather uh, something very special. Well, so it seems to me. I think, sir, if you see something very clearly, that some things are utterly destructive, mm -hmm. you will walk away from it. You see, the idea of renouncing and sacrifice and conflict never existed. Not that I'm something special, but it is. It is so in life. If I used to know a great many communists at one time. Communists? Uh -huh. <laughs> Can I talk about it in this country? <laughs> of course. <laughs> a card-carrying communist in Holland, in England, mm -hmm. so They would go with me so far. I said, no authority. Either Lenin, Stalin, or no authority. Uh -huh. <laughs> they backed away from that. And a great many, I used to know some bishops and you know all that kind of thing. They, I remember once in Streza, you know Streza, oh, in yes. Italy. Yes, of course. And Lago you speak Maggi Italian. Uh, Lago Maggiore. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was invited by one of the uh, disciples or one of the leaders under Mussolini. Yes, <laughs> it was an authoritarian figure, yeah. certainly. So they asked, they hired a big hall. And there were, when I got up on the platform, there were all the cardinals and all the there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I said, I talked about authority. There should be no authority in spiritual matters. Mm -hmm. And they listened very quietly. I talked for about 40 minutes or so. Absolute silence. <laughs> Next day, I was to continue series. Mm -hmm. There was an old, one old lady sitting in the corner. Just one, and you. <laughs> I had a few friends of mine. This has happened everywhere where orthodoxy is very strong. Because the, 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 the humanity now follows somebody. Mm -hmm. In this country, there are the specialists. Yes, and, and the cult of personality. Oh, disgusting. Well, it's certainly very misleading, even not, if one is no, not... No, I think it's so destructive. Yes. Yes. That means that you are merely following some of your own emotional stresses and your emotional... Mm, that yeah, projection, projection that you're speaking of. And they're not worth it, mm -hmm. those people they follow. We only discover that, though, um, apparently, by putting them up on that uh, pedestal or uh, elevating them to you know, a position all the of power. Yes, of He's course. He's a um, Frenchman who was a communist writer. Yes. I met him several times in France long ago. And he went to uh, Moscow, mm -hmm. totally disillusioned, came back and wrote books. But he drew, dragged with him when he was a communist, great many. Yes. And later on he gave it up. <laughs> there was stuck and he was free. But all through the decade of the 1930s, yes, uh, there were a great many intelligent people who uh, steeped themselves in those dogmas. I think it is partly excitement, something new. And, and partly, it would seem to me, distrust of self, because it is yeah. in those times of crisis that instead of turning inward and That's trusting right, ourselves, right. we look outward yeah. for some savior. Yeah. This is what is happening in the countries where there is a great deal of disorder. Mm -hmm. They want somebody to lead them. Yeah. A Hitler? I don't know if you Where there is disorder, that very disorder creates authority. Mm -hmm. Which is happening in this country. And that would apply also to the model of the individual self. Yeah, of course. Where there is confusion. Where there is, I mean, Unless you put your house in order, your own house, mm -hmm. 
the society cannot have order. I mean, it's so obvious what's happened in this country. Drugs, people murder, 50,000 children are kidnapped every year. You follow, you follow all this. There's really confusion. And America is becoming the... Uh, he's, she's leading the world. In, in these things? In these in things. Violence. And also people from the East want to be like America. Yes, for good or ill, uh, and, for good and ill. Yes, the vulgarity, the noise, the. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what is the place of love in uh, an apparently heartless world? Sir, that's really quite, well, very complex question. I don't you want to go into it. In marriage or <coughs> when you are living with somebody, is there love? <coughs> or is it sensuality? Or, it? or mutual dependence. Dependence, convenience, mm -hmm. and mutual adoration, mm -hmm. mutual sense supporting each other. So, the all that's called love. And is it love? Is desire love? I mean, the whole American, if you see television on this, nothing but entertainment. From the bishops down. Which is just distraction. Distraction. Yeah. And then. To, to, to kill another, you can't, if you love somebody, if you love. Here, all over the world, they don't seem to mind anymore to killing people for some ideas, mm -hmm. for some ideals, for some idiotic concepts. They're willing to throw bombs, kidnap, murder. Mm -hmm. Now, all religions from 5000 BC and perhaps before, all religions accepted orthodox said love is necessary. Love which is not personal, which is not, I'm translating for myself, which is not attachment. Because when you are attached, there is fear, there is anxiety, a sense of division. And so, so love also must be without conditions, okay. unconditional. Which means no fear, no jealousy. Yes. And it cannot, an ambitious man, man cannot love. Whether in the physical world or in the psycho psychological, so-called spiritual world, when he wants to attain nirvana or illumination or something, mm -hmm. that ambition destroys love, if you have it. So, ambition, Jealousy, desire, pleasure is not love. If you say that to people, let's say, what, what are you talking about? I was talking to somebody very intelligent, a woman, very highly educated in England. She said, what are you talking about? I used to know quite well. She said, what are you talking about? Love means jealousy. Mm. The two go together. Uh -huh. Otherwise, there is no love. <laughs> it, I, I used to know her quite well and we used to talk a great deal, but I couldn't even pers allow her to think this way. She wouldn't allow it. So, so that's the question. Really, we must, to understand what love is, there must be intelligence. You mean love is not possible between beings who are not highly intelligent? I, I don't. I don't see that. No, no. Wait a minute. Let's go into the question of intelligence. Mm -hmm. What is intelligence? Not the mechanical intelligence. Mm -hmm. Not the computer, ultra mm -hmm. computer intelligence. But intelligence is not the product of thought. Ah. 
So you're speaking of something very different from that yes, thought course, process we spoke of before. It's not the result of cunning thought, mm -hmm. of all the mechanical movements of thought. After all, I suppose I loved somebody. I lived with her or him, and I'm building a series of images about her, and she's doing the same with me. Mm -hmm. And so these images of, of 40 years, the memories, the pictures, the incidents, the nagging, the hurts, all that I retain, mm -hmm. consciously or unconsciously. And the relationship is between these two. Yes. The images I have about her and she is about me. Mm -hmm. That's not love. So to understand this very complex question, one must really go into the question of what is thinking? How can one then follow your prescription, which is which is, saying, know the self. which is saying rationally, it's not my prescription. It, 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 it is indeed rational. It's, so it seems to me. Yet, it is also extremely rare. And of course, people say, when the whole world, in the American world right now, is geared to entertainment, mm -hmm. this... Yes, <laughs> we're here. Yeah, this whole business of television is nothing but entertainment. Mm -hmm. And entertain means excitement. Mm -hmm. Excitement to buy a piece of toast, they sing and dance. And you've seen it. Yes. yes. So how can such a mind or brain which has lived in excitement from childhood understand something extraordinarily complex, which is human beings, a human being, mm -hmm. his whole biological, nervous, mechanical reactions, and the whole nature of thinking. How to him he says, for God's sake, get on with it, tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. What are the rules? One, what two, three, the... yes. He never says, I will drop all this, find out for myself. Mm -hmm. That's my, that requires a great deal of attention, meditation, looking, mm -hmm. watching, mm -hmm. arguing, talking. You follow? I do. It could be argued, of course, that there could be a different way of educating people. Oh, God. And I know that a great deal of your attention uh, and of the Krishnamurti Foundation's attention has gone into education. Yes. We've got five schools in India. Mm -hmm. And they're forming another one. There's one in England, one in California. Mm -hmm. uh, see, our idea is <coughs> academic unnecessary, but also to bring about a good human being. Mm -hmm. Not American good human being or Indian good. But a good human being. A good human being who would be free. Free, that's right. Capable, therefore, of love. Yeah, not mm -hmm. conditioned. Mm -hmm. Not afraid. Mm -hmm. Therefore, rebellious against authority. Uh, not rebellious. He, he doesn't belong but, to that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but interested in, in change. Oh, obviously. Psychological revolution, not physical revolution. That physical revolution, like in the communist Russia, has not produced anything. The, what is important is psychological revolution. Well, this, this raises, of course, a whole series of questions. I'd like to pause for yes. some words and come back to that. Yes. I get the impression that one great aspect of the problem that we're talking about is all of this confusion and cacophony. Therefore, silence, meditation, would seem to be a way, not a method, but a way but, sir, to resolve. Now, what do you mean by the word meditation? Ah, I was going to ask you, but you've asked me first. <laughs> <laughs> I, you see, conscious meditation 
following a system practice, which most of them do, mm-hmm. is not meditation. You say determination, not meditation. Uh-huh. Determine, a de- desire, determination, planning, and execution. Mm-hmm. That's not meditation. That is a that is a methodology, and methodology, that's not what you're speaking of. That's what of. they're all doing all the time. Mm-hmm. Whether it is Zen, whether it is Tibetan or Hindu, or Hindu all these are uh, to control thought, essentially. Mm-hmm. Control thought so that your brain is not rattling around all the time, chattering away. Mm-hmm. One should also ask, who is the controller? It's easier to control, but who is the controller? Is not the controller part of the controlled? Just as the observer is part of the observed, observed. if we're trying to look at ourselves, Obviously. of course. So, that's why I'm saying conscious, deliberate meditation, whether introduced by the gurus into this country and so on, is meaningless, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. It has really no depth, Uh no sense of, it doesn't create sensitivity, observation, attention. Mm -hmm. It's just repetition. You've seen those people Mm -hmm. who are calling money in this country. Yes. Instead of Ave Maria, they repeat some other word. A mantra. Yeah, mantra. That's my... You know that word mantra means? I won't go into the complex meaning of it, just ponder over not becoming. Not becoming. And dissolve all self-centered activity. Which would presumably mm. cut you off from yourself. Which is no. To, to work that out, to work out in your life, daily life, not in a Uh monastery, Uh work out your daily life not to become something in Uh Uh psychological. And also dissolve, put aside any self-centered activity. Uh That's the real meaning of the word mantra. Mm -hmm. So what then do you mean by meditation as distinct from what we've spoken of? I'll tell you. Through negation you come to the positive. When you deny what is not, Mm -hmm. then you are beginning to have a brain that is not caught in any system. And it means to meditate you must understand relationship. It must begin there. Not high up there, it must begin on the ground Mm -hmm. and the foundation must be laid, which means no hurts, psychological, no wounds, no fear, no anxiety, no conflict, absolutely no problems. Mm -hmm. So that presupposes a high degree of self-knowledge, if I understand it. No, not only self-knowledge. It demands that you be very, very earnest and honest, mm-hmm. have integrity, otherwise it's all nonsense. And when you say relationship, are you speaking of human relationship with no. another? Yes, or? not only that, human relationship with nature. Mm-hmm. With that I understood. Yeah, with relationship between two human beings. Mm-hmm. I mean, the conflict between two human beings, which exists now throughout the world, mm-hmm. <coughs> in spite of all the specialists, all the drugs, the tremendous conflict going on yes. between the sexes, and <coughs> that conflict is expressed in society. Mm-hmm. And we, we are talking about changing society, but we are always contributing to, to destroy any change. So, to understand the depth and the beauty and the greatness of meditation, one must be absolutely free of all desire, 
because uh, I don't mean desire. Um, we must understand the word desire. It's very complex. Do you want to go into all this? Yes, please. Because you've alluded to desire several times. Yes. And I get the sense that desire stands in the way. Of course. But therefore, you, I don't know if you have noticed, you must have all the monks throughout the world have denied desire. Now you're speaking of sexual desire. Sexual or any any desire. Mm -hmm. But they they desire for heaven. Yes. They desire <laughs> for the saviour. Mm -hmm. They desire to be a noble, etc. etc. Mm -hmm. That's also desire. Yes, of course. So to understand desire one must go into the question what is desire? Mm -hmm. Which dominates the world dominates every human being. I see a beautiful woman or a beautiful car, a nice house, a nice picture. Desire. Desire. Yes. So, what's the root of desire? Because seeing a car or a woman or a picture or a house, mm -hmm. then contact, touching it, mm -hmm. Possessing. then sensation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then thought comes along and creates the image, you sitting in the car mm -hmm. or having that house, mm -hmm. and at that moment desire is born. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Now, to have a, a hiatus, a gap between sensation and not thought, not creating the image out of the sensation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, when you are very attentive, you can see this happening. When you see that, there is not a question of controlling desire, mm -hmm. but watching that thought doesn't create the image out of sensation. Uh -huh. I don't know if you understand. I, I think I do. Now let me take uh, another kind of, of image. Uh, I, let us suppose, I have a, a mind filled with, with hate, animosity. Animosity. Yeah. I can never rid myself of that except by observing it and understanding it, seeing it. Yes, but why do you have animosity? Before you begin to observe, why? Either he has hurt you, mm -hmm. Some real or imagined Imagine hurt? Mm -hmm. hurt. Or some projection from yes, my own? Yes, various, various causes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So which means what? You have an image about yourself. Yes. And that image is trodden upon. And you get hurt. Mm -hmm. And you say that man is a brute or is yes. this, is that. Yes. So, I don't know. Not to have an image. So, a lot of this, whether we're talking about desire, whether we're talking about hatreds and animosities, has to do with with dissolving those images before they take place, Thanks. not allowing now, them. That's why you must understand, one must understand what is thinking. Mm -hmm. Because that is the root of all this. Because what thought is... can create the image that will... Uh, or it can... Yes. Prevent that image no, from no, taking form? It, no, no. no. Uh -huh. That's why I'm saying thought must be understood. Mm -hmm. The whole process of thinking. Yes. Right? Whether in the scientific world, in the religious world, or in any, any field, mm -hmm. one must understand what is thinking. Yes. Thinking is really, isn't it, the reaction of memory. Yes. Memory is knowledge. That is the sum total. Knowledge is the sum total of Th all our memory. Yeah? So, well. uh, knowledge is born of experience. Mm -hmm. But in the scientific world, in a personal experience. Mm -hmm. And so, experience is always limited. Mm -hmm. There is no complete experience. Yes. Therefore, there is no complete knowledge about anything. 
Therefore, knowledge is limited. Always. Always. Mm -hmm. Whether in the scientific world or my knowledge of you or your knowledge of me is mm -hmm. limited. Mm -hmm. And so, experience, knowledge, memory is limited. Therefore, thought is limited. And that whatever is limited must inevitably create conflict. Inevitably. Inevitably. Mm -hmm. Which is what has happened politically, economically, right? Mm -hmm. And religiously. Yes. Is creating tremendous problems. Yes. Psychologically. Of course, of course. Yes. Right. <coughs> so, as long as we have problems created by thought, and realize thought cannot solve these problems mm -hmm. because it's created them. Yes. It's like playing a game with. Yes. So, one has to understand: is there another instrument rather than thought? And there must be. Ah, we're going to find out. To find out. One must understand the nature of thought, what is created in the world, the beneficial and the destructive nature of thought. All the things that are in the churches, in the temples, in the mosques are created by thought. Mm -hmm. The robes they put on, created by thought. The rituals, the icons, the works. Almost the whole oh, works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's very limited. Those age straight from God or... This extends to the Bible, it extends uh, uh, to all... The Gita, to all books. Uh, right. hmm? So, put aside all that mm -hmm. and come to the point that thought cannot possibly solve our problems. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a tremendous step to take, which very few people are willing to take. Because we have given our, we, we have elevated thought to yes, su such so a high well, position. Of course, how you how scientists are worshipped, yes. looked up to, mm -hmm. and the doctors, you know, all the, it's mm -hmm. all limited thought that is creating the problem. Yes. Thought is always limited. It's not complete thought. They can never be. So the, we accept that. Let us say, let us say that we are then prepared to make this decision, to then, come to this decision. So that means thought has its place. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be here you. But it that, is limited. It's limited. Uh, knowledge is limited. Mm -hmm. And your education now is becoming more and more given knowledge, more and more, mm -hmm. and therefore the human brain is becoming more and more limited. I don't know if you... Uh -huh. Yes, I see. So the more cluttered it of becomes, course. the more limited it Obvious, becomes. obvious. Right. So, when one realizes that, not intellectually, but actually, mm -hmm. as a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. then you would ask, is there another instrument? Yes. Hmm? Yes. It cannot be personal. Why not? Person means limited. All right. Right? It cannot be something imaginary, universal. Mm -hmm. The astrophysicists are looking at the heavens, trying to understand it. Mm -hmm. They understand in terms of gas, matter, and space, and all that. But that that, you, that, that is knowledge too, and that, that is limited. limited. Therefore, to understand the universe, which means, which is complete order, mm -hmm. one must have order in oneself. That's a ah, different matter. Yes. So is there another instrument? Now, how are we going to find out? No philosopher is going to touch it, because his whole uh, basis is based on thought, theories, speculations, what is justice, what is goodness, Aristotle says, and so on, so on. He can't see conceive or feel that thought is limited. Be a denial of everything that stands for it, sure. Yes. Which means denial of the self. Mm -hmm. 
because the self is put together by thought. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you are really concerned to find another instrument which is not thought, though thought has its place, that implies a brain that is free from all conditioning. Neither a Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, mm -hmm. especially you, you have a brain yes. which is active, which is free. Now, what is is there another instrument? I say there is. You don't have to believe it. It's not a matter of faith and belief. Mm -hmm. It's it's a matter of argument, doubt, question, mm -hmm. inquiry. If you admit that that you are inquiring, doubting what I am saying, mm -hmm. then you, we meet at the same level. Yes, and, and I do that. Yeah, actually do it, <laughs> not theoretically. No, no, actually. All right, if you do it actually, what is the state of the brain which is no longer, has no longer fear? Because Fear is put together by thought. No longer fear of death, all the rest of it. Right? Mm -hmm. So, the total psychological elimination of fear. Hard to uh, imagine. And not imagine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can't yes, find yes, the other. Right, right. So. It's like a gardener who wants to produce a new rose, he has to. Work at it. Yes. So there must be no sense of controller. Mm -hmm. the, the Utterly end, free. free. Which means the ending of sorrow. Mm -hmm. Because human beings have suffered for f over 5,000 years. Right? Mm -hmm. And the, the Buddha talked about the ending sorrow. Mm -hmm in 2500 BC, and humanity has not understood sorrow hmm? and not be free of it. And at this moment we have to pause yes, for some words and come back. You see, the other instrument can, ex can only come into being when you have understood, when the brain has understood the whole complexity of thought. Without really going to the depth of thought, to see the other is futile. Mm -hmm. There, it is possible. I'm saying this because, it, which implies insight and action. Mm -hmm. You see something to be true. Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, nationalism, which is tribal, glorified tribalism, is very destructive. And you don't belong to, Nash, to any country, because you see what it does in the world. Yes. Have, I can say an, a thing that is true. It is a great pleasure to be at one with you yes. at this level, yes. in the closing moments of this program. And then? So, to see what, what thought has done, the good and the bad, and to give it its proper importance, that is the ground. That is the solid ground you can stand on, so to speak. And from there you look. That, it seems to me, requires such clarity, of a kind that I have never experienced. Not character, it requires... Clarity. Clarity. Yeah. Hmm? It requires observation. Mm -hmm. Observation without any prejudice.